Today, I'm not only gonna show you how to prevent hold, but I'm also gonna show you how to get out of the holds that you're already in and increase your monthly and daily limits on your PayPal account. Hey, what's up everyone? My name's John and welcome to The Creed. For those of you that don't know me, I build e-commerce stores and I help people just like you escape that nine to five grind by building an online business. As you can see right here, this is one of my PayPal accounts. It has absolutely no limits and it has a daily withdrawal amount of $100,000 that's available to me. I'm gonna show you how to get your PayPal accounts to this level and if you're already in a hold, I'm gonna show you how to get out of those holds and release that money so that you can use it to build your business. If you haven't already subscribed, you know this channel has massive value. Hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified every time I post new valuable content. I also give away a free consultation call every single Saturday. All you need to do is just like this video and comment down below welcome to the creed and you're gonna be entered to win that free call. I announce the winner to that call every single Saturday in the comments of that video. So the first thing that we're gonna go over here is preventing the holds in the first place. Of course, if you can just like me, you don't wanna have to deal with the holds. So let's try to prevent them in the first place. The first thing that you wanna do is actually understand the way PayPal works. So PayPal is a payment processor. And anytime that you bring a customer through their process, that brings on risk for PayPal. Cause just imagine it this way. Let's say that your PayPal account has absolutely no money in it. You get a customer that comes through and now you suddenly have some money in your account. If that customer does open up a credit card dispute or a dispute with PayPal, that money is then withdrawn from that account and you now have no money available in your PayPal account. If you go through and you withdraw a large amount of money from your PayPal account and then you get these chargebacks, your PayPal account then will go into the negative. This money has to come from somewhere and if it's not coming from your PayPal account or any of the backup methods that we're going to go over, it's coming out of PayPal's bank account and they do not like that at all. So you need to understand this and set things in place that will make PayPal feel more secure with your business and make them feel like if this does happen, no money will be coming out of their account. The first thing that we wanna to do to establish a good relationship with PayPal is update all orders with their appropriate tracking information. This indicates to PayPal that when you say you're shipping out a product to a customer, you are actually shipping out a product to a customer and on the back end, their systems and their bots register this as valid information and in certain cases, they'll actually send bots to test the tracking information to see if it is accurate and if it is working. So the best way to do this and ensure that you do get proper tracking information update is using an app called PayPal Tracking Autopilot. If you are still actively drop shipping with AliExpress and using the DSERS app like I do recommend you use, DSERS just did an update on their app that automatically syncs the tracking information from your orders over to your PayPal order. So if you do have DSERS and you're operating using that system, you can just go ahead and activate that setting and this will cover this section. If you don't have DSERS, what you're gonna wanna do is use the PayPal tracking autopilot app that syncs directly to your Shopify store. This is what you would use if you were using an agent or an alternative service to ZSERS. The next thing that we want to do is have all business information up to date and the main thing is including a support email address. So when I say business information this means on the back end of PayPal. As you can see here you would just go into your account settings and then you would go to business information. In business information you want to make sure that you have all up-to-date information to do with your address, to do with contact information, for your company, business structure, and your total amount of money coming in. Those amounts that you set in your business information saying my business brings in this amount of money does actually matter. If you say that your business brings in twenty-five dollars to $100,000 per year, but then you're bringing in twenty-five dollars to $100,000 per month, PayPal is going to throw up a red flag and say what the heck is going on. So it's always best to adjust these amounts to your business and ensure that you have some of the most accurate information on your business back end in PayPal. And the number one thing is make sure that your customer support email is included in your PayPal backend. The next thing that we want to do is add bank account information to PayPal and verify it. And then you're going to also want to go through and add your credit card information to PayPal and again verify it. So this comes back to what I was talking about when it comes to limiting risk for PayPal. They want to ensure that if your PayPal bank account is empty, they have other sources to draw funds from instead of having to dive into their own pocket. So if you have a bank account that's active on PayPal, first they're going to go and and they're gonna to try to withdraw the money from that bank account. If there's no funds in there or if it's in overdraft, which that is 
absolutely horrible, they're gonna then try to go to your credit card and draw money from there. When you have these different payment accounts set up, this gives PayPal three different places to draw funds from in the event that you are getting a bunch of chargeback or claims coming through on your PayPal account. Again, limiting risk for PayPal and ensuring that there's a higher chance they won't have to take money out of their own pocket. Next thing that you wanna do is respond to messages and cases right away. So not only the PayPal cases, but just the little messages that come through on PayPal too, you wanna to make sure that you're responding to these as fast as possible. What this does is it indicates to PayPal that you're actively dealing with issues as they come through and you're keeping your account in good standing. If you have a bunch of messages and open cases on your PayPal account, Account. This indicates to PayPal that you're not a well-functioning business and there are people that are waiting around trying to figure out what's wrong, which again increases risk for PayPal because people that are waiting around in the messages or with the cases are at a higher risk of going and starting a credit card claim. So with PayPal, there's two different types of claims. There's a PayPal claim and then there's a credit card claim, both of which are bad, but PayPal absolutely hates the credit card claims even more. And that's why they started their PayPal claim system. If you have a customer that has an open case with you through PayPal and then they get annoyed because it's been taking so long for you to deal with it and go open a credit card claim with their bank. This is a massive issue for PayPal because it indicates to them that you are a horrible business and a lot of issues for them to have to deal with with the banks on the back end. Have a good business, no shady practices. So I know when you're starting out, this is very difficult to do. You are learning the business. You're trying to figure out exactly how to do things and exactly how to build out the business properly. But when it comes comes to building the business, don't do shady practices. So many people will do so many shady practices that they're just asking for PayPal to ban them or hold their money. Try to go through and run as ethically correct a business as you possibly can to the best of your ability. So we've gone through, we've tried to prevent all these PayPal holds, but unfortunately we've got a hole. This hurts the soul. This is no fun to have a PayPal hold. I've helped several people get out of these holds, but it is something that is very difficult, especially for your business that needs that active flow and movement of your cash. So for getting out of the holds, the first thing that you want to do is establish good payment history. What this means is you want to get a good amount of customers coming through PayPal that are doing purchases and their payment information is registering correctly. If you have a lot of fraudulent orders, or if you have a lot of payments getting declined, that kind of thing, this is something that will automatically throw up red flags and create holds and limits on your account. The more customers that come through PayPal that check out correctly, the better off you are. You want to ensure all all orders have proper tracking information like we mentioned. Just make sure you're updating all the tracking information. And if you can, try your best to get good quality tracking information. I know with suppliers and with agents, a lot of the tracking information can sometimes be very patchy and not actually work sometimes. So just try your best with this. Try to ensure you're getting the best quality tracking information that you can. Stop selling products that have a high dispute rate. So if you're going through and you find yourself a banger product, it's selling like crazy, but you're also getting a ton of emails from people saying, this is a horrible product. It's breaking. It doesn't work how it's supposed to. It's not what I thought I was getting. Stop selling that product. It's not worth it trying to go through and sell a horrible quality product, especially nowadays, because there's so many different areas in the business process that will ban you, cut you, pause your funds, all of these different things. And you don't want to have to deal with those things as you're building out your business long term. If the product that you are running turns out to be poor quality, either find a better quality version of that product or stop selling it. Ensure all your website information is up to date in PayPal. I put here their bots will do crawls. So periodically, especially if you're getting a lot of red flags coming up on your account, PayPal will send out bots to do little crawls. What this means is they're going to go through your website and check and see if you have contact forms, if you have privacy policies, if you have payment policies, if you have terms of service, all of these different pages active on your website. Website. Because if you don't have these pages active on your website, this indicates that your store has a high fraud risk. So you want to ensure that you have all of this information up to date and not only up to date on your store, but up to date on the back end of PayPal. If PayPal bots go through and they crawl your website and find out that your website name isn't actually the same as the website name that you have on PayPal, that again will throw up a massive red flag. So you want to make sure that all of the information is congruent both on PayPal and your website so that when the bot Let's go through and do these crawls. They find the same information. Ensure all items from the previous section are completed. So back from that past section, you want to make sure that those are all completed. This will get you out of the holds. It is a process. So this isn't something that's just going to happen right
right away. Fastest I've ever gotten someone out of a hold was two weeks. So you want to keep in mind, it is a process that takes a bit of time because PayPal needs to become comfortable and confident with your business again. After you've gone through and you've done all of these different things, contact PayPal and request a manual review. So when it comes to contacting their support team, you're going to deal with just their basic reps like any other support teams for different companies. What you want to do is try your best to get in contact with a higher level support rep that has authorization to send out this type of a request. If you go and you request just a standard review, they're just going to send a bot through, which can result sometimes in your account getting that hold withdrawn. But the best way is to go through and get an actual manual review done by a human because they can verify all the information a lot better and also a lot faster. So if you're out there dealing with PayPal holds and limits, most likely your Facebook score is lacking too. Go ahead and click on this video right here. It shows you how to improve your Facebook feedback score, take it well beyond that 2.0 dead limit, and keep your business functioning without any Facebook limitations. Thank you everyone so much for joining me on this video. Just click that next video to be taken to the next piece of content.